Merry Krishnamas. <laughs> and happy Amanita Muscaria Day. <laughs> <laughs> Historians say that the first uh, Eucharist was the magic mushroom <clears throat> and that all of the ancient mystery schools <clears throat> used entheogens as methods of replicating God consciousness for those who were not able to reach it naturally or at least without benefit of chemical assistance. <clears throat> because religion has always been about reaching altered states of consciousness, <clears throat> in which the heart would open to pure divine love unconditionally, and the ego mind would be silenced. And the holy days were those days that were celebrated by such use of sacraments, the ceremonial use of entheogens, so that a community as a whole could learn how to vibrate in resonance at those higher levels of consciousness in which heart and mind are integrated and open and channeling the divine and supreme luminous energies of the infinite self so that all days would eventually be holy days and there would not be necessary the use of those sacraments because consciousness itself would be recognized as the sacrament, as the Eucharist. And then gradually the use of those sacred substances became more persecuted, censored, marginalized, and religion became more about dogmatic belief systems. And the enforcement of thought police control over the mind but no longer about the transcendence of the mind. But the original and ongoing and eternal purpose of religion is that transcendence. The transcendence of the ego into the Holy Spirit is the act of theosis or self-divinization. And in the ancient world it was recognized by all of the cultures that human consciousness exists on a spectrum and the lower levels of that spectrum pertain to the bodily identification levels of consciousness which produce fear, desire, greed, attachment, uh, and all of the various other pathological aspects of the ego. And then in between that and the highest, there is the level of soul in which there is discernment and there is uh, aspiration uh, for those higher states with the blessings of bliss and wisdom and the joy and beauty of the luminous presence of God consciousness and that the struggle of the human at that level of the soul in which it discerns the ultimate salvation of reaching the highest level of its own spectrum of potentiality versus falling into those lower levels that offer the instant gratification and pleasures of the sensory realm, but which always then are uh, followed by a backlash and an addictive process and a weakening of the soul and uh, 
its capacity of will and discernment and the higher, the upper death drive. And it is this that creates the struggle of the human condition. Do we settle for being the human ego identified with the material body or do we recognize that we are beings of light and of that single whole infinite consciousness of which this world is a dream field produced and morphed and directed by that higher consciousness. And the soul, therefore, has free will to choose either the human or the divine, <clears throat> but it is indoctrinated and pulled down by various factors of external uh, expectation, demand, and the situatedness of a cultural frame of reference within one level or another of that spectrum of human potential consciousness. The importance of the Christ concept in the West was that symbolic manifestation or metaphor of one who had access to the entirety of the spectrum of consciousness, one who was both human and divine complete man, complete God, and who through the knowledge of the lower chakra nature of the ego, converted into wisdom, was able to offer the word that would bring salvation through conversion of the confusion and false frame of reference into the recognition of the real that underlies and transcends the false consciousness of the ego, and thus releases us from suffering. And that was the good news, the gospel that was brought to the world <clears throat> with the idea that Christ manifests as an image of every man, every being, and that everyone has Christ consciousness as their own option, their own possible choice if they would but leave behind the temptations of the lower levels of consciousness and recognize the bliss that is available to those who rise to that consciousness which is beyond thought. And this going beyond thought is the rite of passage that every religion has to provide in, through one means or another to enable the stabilization of its disciples in that state in which there can be an abidance as the God-Self without falling back into the egoic levels of fear and desire and anxiety, etc. And so all of the various <laughs> methods of all the religions that developed after the use of the entheogens was no longer permitted or even remembered except in certain esoteric symbols that were conveniently never interpreted, but you can still see in the statues in Rome and the Vatican and in many other places, uh, east and west. But the consciousness was continually uh, taught to be raised through prayer, through meditation, through acts of service, uh, through self-control, and through the processes of confession and of various other uh, forms of purification, including self-flagellation and remorse for sin, uh, 
But once there had been lost the taste of that higher consciousness, then it became more and more of a, a kind of a skeptical approach and a, a more traditional symbolic level of, uh, let's say, loyalty to a symbolic system rather than to the real presence of God as the truth of our nature and being. And as hypocrisy and uh, futility became more and more uh, the, uh, the fare that religion offered through empty rituals that no longer had any psychological effect uh, and that simply brought about a, a kind of boredom with the ritualistic approach to uh, religious indoctrination, the uh, interest in that form of approaching God became uh, less and less relevant and then with the coming of materialism and capitalism and consumerism and scientism, uh, religion itself became marginalized and ridiculed as an approach that any intelligent being would uh, take or, or, uh, or live their life within its uh, paradigm because the benefits of the world were coming through the mind through technology, through the mind's ability to manipulate nature, not through transcendence any longer, not through the realization of the powers of redreaming reality from a higher state. Those were now nothing but legends and old wives' tales and uh, no longer had the credibility that uh, the gifts of technology could offer. And so we are at this point in which we come from a world that uh, has been uh, converted to cynicism and to a normality of materialistic body consciousness in which those altered states that people can still and very often do enter for recreational purposes and some for truly spiritual purposes. Uh, but those states become the unreal. They become the, the states that represent the hallucinatory and even the psychotic in some cases. And they may produce psychosis in some cases so that the purity of the downloads and the inspirations and the, uh, the prophecies that can often result uh, from an ayahuasca ceremony or other forms of, uh, let's say, trance uh, initiation, uh, whether through the use of substances or simply through dance and uh, chanting and various other forms of self-hypnosis uh, do not alter the frame of reference of the sober, consumerist, materialist approach to life that depends on being able to get back to work the next day. And so that those ceremonies must not... Uh, have too much of a hangover effect that would prevent one from being productive in the system. And therefore, the, the effects are very quickly lost or turned into some private uh, narrative of uh, mythological imagery that cannot be interpreted in reference to one's daily life so much as to uh, realms and 
dimensions that transcend our own but do not pervade and transform the meaning and the significance and the very appearance of the world that we live in that can only be reached again with the help of substances that uh, temporarily deaden the ego's interference patterns but do not provide a full entry into the dimension of the real. In the same way that a near-death experience is not the same as a real death. And the, the, the one who goes through a near death but is able to come back has only enter, entered into the antechamber of those higher levels that follow. Not the first death, but the second death. And in the ancient world, it was recognized that the death of the physical body, the first death, is not the important one, but the death of the subtle body, the death of the soul, was the entry into the supreme light. And if that had not happened, then there would have to be a reincarnation, that one was still on the wheel of suffering until one had learned that the soul itself and the consciousness that the soul has that is a subtle I thought that creates separation and duality is the cause then of the gestalt within consciousness that forces a return into a world of duality. And so in order for Christ to be born in the world, the ego must first die. Without that death, there cannot be the birth of Christ consciousness. And that birth is a virgin birth. It's not the immaculate conception, by the way. There's, I myself was confused about this and nearly illiterate about much of it. Christianity, I must confess. But the Immaculate Conception does not concern Jesus. How many people know that? Uh, it concerns Mary. Uh, it turns out that Mary's own conception in the womb of her mother, Anne, uh, who became Saint Anne, of course, uh, that Mary's birth was the Immaculate Conception, not that of Jesus. Mm -hmm.